Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we've got a fun little project. This is a 2018 Honda Pioneer 1005. We've got it in here for service today. Uh, the CD boot has failed on us. Yeah, you can see right there. And what happened was it was off-roading in the woods back here. And we got caught up under a log. The log had a protrusion. And that found its way up through this control arm and into the CV boot. We'll be replacing that. I'll show you how to do that. You gotta jack the vehicle up first. Take the wheel off. Now, if you never pulled a CV axle out on a car or an off-road vehicle like this, you might be wondering how that's actually accomplished. But basically, we're going to disconnect the suspension. Definitely the upper control arm. We're going to droop the uh, the knuckle down. And that's going to allow us to slide this into the CV joint out. And then usually on this side, we'll just be able to pop it out with a pry bar or flathead screwdriver. And then it should be out. We got Sriracha the dog over there helping us out today. She's going to make sure nothing gets too crazy or out of hand. What she got going on? Can you shake? Step one, please. You gotta lift the vehicle up so that I can take this tire off. Have some suspension to to accomplish that. I'm going to lift the vehicle from the frame towards the back. I anticipate the front tire is gonna come up off the ground, so I am gonna chalk the left tires. So, put some boards on my jack. Do a little extra lift. And now I'm up under the frame. We got a floor jack up under there. Very important, it's under the frame rail. If you don't have it on the frame rail, you're going to be on the plastic underpan. And that's not ideal because that's not how you're going to successfully lift the vehicle. After I jacked the vehicle up, I did put a jack stand under it. You never want to leave your vehicle on a floor jack while you're working on it. All right. I'm going to reach into the toolbox with some air tools. So these are 19 millimeter lugs on this here Pioneer. Once they're off, the wheel comes right off. Once that wheel is off, you're going to see your hub assembly right here. You got your brake disc. Good time to inspect your pads. They're rear pads. These are original. Look like they got plenty of life. So yeah, the next step, we've got to get this axle nut off. I'm going to take that off now before I get involved with unbolting the suspension. Um, we're going to have to flip this cotter pin. I'll get some needle nose. And it's going to come through this castle nut here. And we'll zip that off. If you're going to need some air tools for this part, it's going to make your life easy. Uh, these are usually on there uh, rather snugly. You should be able to get this off easily. I do recommend replacing these with a new uh, cotter pin. We got to work it. Here's a small punch. There she goes, just lightly tapping it out. There it comes. Ta -da. Now we'll get that nut off. So yes, yeah, it's a 30 millimeter socket. You got impact because air tools. All right. She's coming. There we go. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and take my caliper off. It's going to be two bolts here, uh, 14 or 12, I think. They're actually 12s. And then I can set my caliper aside. All right, so yeah, to get this caliper off, we're going to take the caliper bolts off. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. Got a 12 millimeter ratchet, 17 millimeter crescent wrench. Okay, cool. That was the first one. Easy peasy. No fight. Going on to the bottom. There we go. We'll just take these out. 
this caliper should come right off there we go it's a good time to inspect it so we're just setting that up out of the way um, you don't want to disconnect any of the hydraulic lines if you do uh, you're going to need to bleed the brake system the next step is going to be getting this bolt out here uh, this looks like a 14 and a 14 so yeah 14 got our box and wrench here two hands necessary there we go so there, got uh, that off, slide it that way. Now before I go and get this, this upper knuckle bolt out here, what I like to do when I'm working on a suspension like this is get my floor jack and uh, come up on under the uh, lower control arm here. And I just want to take the weight off the suspension sometimes that shock absorber and the spring the nah, the spring to be precise whoops stay up there the spring will be uh, forcing the suspension down um, and this bolt will fight you so but once we take the weight off this bolt comes out rather easily a little bit of effort required but not much and if I don't feel like fighting it the rest of the way, I'll just lift up a little bit. If you lift up too much, you're going to push it the other way. So sometimes you got to toggle up and down a little bit. But you pretty much just want uh, neutral force. And there we go. Popped out. So this is exactly what we want. This, uh, this is going to droop it out for us. This has already uh, started to attract the CV spindle. All right, I'm gonna pull it the rest of the way like that. All right, there she comes. And you can even take the floor jack out at this point to get a little more, a little more room to work. And that's all she needs. Coming, coming out. All right, so I'm just gonna position it like that going to try to pop this out this is aluminum so you need to be very careful you're just going to get my pry bar in if you can see that and i'm just going to bleep kind of carefully pop it out here <clears throat> ah there she comes all right but you can see she's out now she's ready for our love and affection we're gonna cut these clamps off we're gonna clean the old grease out once the boot is off we're gonna have to disassemble the axle i believe there's a snap ring on this side that's gonna allow this to come off um, so that we can replace the grease in there and install our new boot here are the new, new boots these i ordered from racedriven.com they are not sponsoring the video i ordered a replacement set for uh, each axle just in case I do this again and I'm just trying to figure out which ones which because um, they are not labeled except for a part number and I couldn't reference that part number on the website with the actual uh, component I'm working with uh, but it looks like this damaged boot is the larger of the boots that I see installed on the vehicle. I got my pair of dikes in my hand. I'm just cutting that bond there where they join. Wear your eye protection. Come on, baby. There she goes. Oh, Lord, come on, baby. All right, so I kind of got it pried up now. There we go. And uh, we'll, we'll take that off in a second. So we'll be able to slide our boot off. Um, going to get a flat head up under here. There we go. Just slide this bad boy back. So using clean rags, I've cleaned the grease out to some extent. On the inner side is the CV joint and then once you get in there and start cleaning you'll see there's like a snap ring so I just use a flathead screwdriver to uh, 
pop that out. All right. And this is going to enable this outer part to just pop off like that. And here again, I'm going to get in there try to clean the grease out. There's a snap ring on the inside that holds this cage, the whole bearing assembly on. So we're going to have to take these bearings off and just get in there. I'm right up against my toolbox. I don't know. All right, go that way. So we kind of got it off now. Get my little flathead. I just kind of sent it out trying not to bend or fatigue this too much because I will be reusing the snap ring which may be a bad idea at this point oh that went right back on there it goes that might not be reusable oh using my marbles so yeah, the, the balls will pop off when you, uh, when you start to rotate. And you can see when you kind of get them to the end of their travel, they just pop out. The cage can slide that way. There go. I like to hit it from one way and then kind of 180 it. Hit it from the other way. Just to evenly do my business. Get a 90 turn. And here again, stay off your bearing surface, the insides, the radius. All right, there we go. We're gonna take our cage out. Boop. Keep in mind, it is, it's more narrow on this side, it's tapered. It's wider on this outside. The narrow side faces outward on the vehicle. So pay attention to that when we're reassembling. All right, and our boot will now come off in its entirety. So slide that bad boy off like that. It's gonna be a little tight at this end. There it goes. I'm gonna get our splines cleaned up here. We've inserted the boot. We've got our clamp. It's not secured yet. Our clamp is waiting on here. Boot properly oriented here. And then we have our cage. You need to put this cage on before you put on your little star because you won't be able to get that on once you install the, the inner bearing cage. So this piece important. On this particular vehicle, it's got a chamfered uh, side and a fully spine side. So this side is going to face the uh, outer side of the vehicle. Oh, and that goes right on. We're going to just finish driving that in with an appropriate size socket, rubber mallet, tap, tap, tap. It's not uh, necessary to beat the hell out of it. Pliers. These are probably too small. All right. Fight, fight. Make sure that's seated. Looks okay. All right. So now our cage is waiting for us. We have to put or uh, put these ball bearings back in. Make sure you get as much of that old grease out as you can. 
I'm going to pay with new grease here shortly. But before we can do that, we need to get our bearings back and our ball bearings. So if you dropped them or didn't store them in a clean spot, make sure you clean them up. This is going to seem kind of counterintuitive at first. Uh, make sure your cage is aligned properly. And by that, I mean that uh, if you look on the inside here, there's machined surfaces where this cage and the star are ride on one another so they can rotate. So that is correct. If you're like this, that's not correct. You want those machine surfaces to line up with each other. This is very important for this step. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my first ball and I'm resting it in this opening on the cage. I'm making sure everything still looks aligned. I'm gonna tap it like that. I'm going to do that for the other five balls and just give it a nice tap. Okay, nothing to it. Just a tap. Tap. That's a probably overkill of a hammer. Same thing. Just like that. Nothing to it. Okay, and then the last ball, make sure you didn't lose any, okay, dunk, there we go, that is the uh, gist of that, we need to get some grease on here, and they gave us this wonderful packet of grease, always a messy process, I like to start on the balls themselves before I pack the inner race of the CV joint or the outer race I guess I should say just kind of work some grease and and use logic you know where the balls are going to be moving and whatnot those are the surfaces that need grease so I've got a good amount left in here we're just going to go ahead and empty the contents into this outer portion of the CV joint. I don't have to bring every last drop out, but I'm just kind of making sure it's in there. Okay. If you want to use gloves, you should have been using them by now. All right. And then she just slides on, provided everything's lined up. We need to put this ring back on. This is the snap ring for the outer part of this axle. This doesn't have any, um, sort of uh like the snap ring setup you're just gonna have to find the groove in there and and push it in and it, it's pretty straightforward and now and only now we can go ahead and seat our boot it looks good to me uh at this point in the game if it looks like this um you are pretty much ready to rock and roll uh, we do need your clamp they have a special set of pliers that will snug these boot clamps on I don't have that so I'm gonna show you a trick if you use this trick it's on you I have long zip ties I'm gonna go ahead and get my zip tie again the preferred method is to Use the proper tool, of course. And this zip tie is not going to stay on. It's just helping you get this clamp seated. <clears throat> I think that one worked. What it did was it puts enough tension on the, the, the metal ring uh, that it, it locks it in place for you. My dikes, get this off here. This, just taking that zip tie off. And I'm happy with that, that's good. That's not gonna go anywhere. I've got this one started. You just, it kind of snaps into itself. Um, so once it's reasonably started, I just take my zip tie, <clears throat> make sure it's fully encompassing that clamp 
and then I'm going to torque it up, get some pliers, put some tension on it. Okay, there she goes. I just used the flathead to kind of help seat the actual metal clamp. So let's go ahead, we're gonna reinstall this now. This is the inner side we're gonna pop in first. This is where we did our work. These really just kind of, there's splines, so you'll have to uh, make sure you're lined up, but they're just gonna pop back in. We can tap on this end to make sure it, it seats, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, at this point I have to get my floor jack in here. And I'm getting up under that lower control arm. Ooh. Got my bolt, it came out like that, so it's gonna go back in, in a similar sense. Once that bolt is in, you can Slowly remove your floor jack. Okay. We had the nut for that bolt. Okay. And I just had to push on the CV axle a little bit to get the threads exposed for the nut. I'm just going to start that. But essentially, this is going to be just like we took it off. Okay. sure it's lined up properly there we go all right cool let's bend one side like that bend the other like that we're gonna put our wheel on next Just like that. And hand started here and zipped on. We must not forget to get our floor jack in place so we can remove our jack stand and wheel chocks. So, uh, yeah, once we remove this, we'll be done. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Otherwise, uh, go watch some Darman videos later.